In last week's video, I showed you guys Tivoli, where we stayed in a centuries-old monastery and visited gorgeous historic sites. Questo è la seconda parte. This week, we're hopping in the van to make our way from Lazio to Puglia. Per una gita a Matera, Martina Franca e Albero Bello. I've decided to share this portion of the trip with you in listicle fashion. 10 things to do on your trip to Italy. Se questo è il primo video che guardate sul mio canale, ciao, sono Katie. Io, mio marito Connor e il nostro cane Kiro vivevamo in Puglia da un anno. Allora, andiamo. Numero uno. Depending on where you're going, rent a car and get great car snacks. Now, I love train travel, but you just can't get around a place like Puglia that easily without a car. So we were grateful we had one. And we stumbled upon the best car snack, a chips flavor I'd never tried before. Malaysian red curry flavor Pringles. They were nothing short of addicting. Legitimately, really freaking good. And another recommendation, Zatar flavored Pugusto chips. It's a four hour drive to Puglia and our first stop was to swing through Trani to show our friends this gorgeous seaside town where we've lived the past year. Then continued further south and a bit inland to Martina Franca in the Valle d'Itria part of Puglia, which is this smaller area in central Puglia. Numero due, rent a place with a pizza oven. Connor, this is quite the fire you made. Our Airbnb in Martina Franca had this outdoor pizza oven and we wasted no time in christening our new destination with a DIY homemade pizza night. It's getting pretty hot. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, but it looks like maybe it's going well. <laughs> None of us really ever know what we're doing, but it usually tends to work out somehow, doesn't it? Yeah, keep it quirky or something like that. <laughs> keep it quirky. I'm inside prepping the dough and all the ingredients for mise en place everything um, so people can make creations. Yeah. Woo, mama mia, mama mia. Oh, that looks so good. It's really good. Whoa. <laughs> this area is known for its truly, these dry stone huts with conical roofs. It's very typical of and unique to Puglia. We'll check them out some more in a bit, but first, prendiamo un caffè. And that's tip number three. Start your day the Italian way at the bar which is what they call the place where you get your cafe. And you'll stand there at the bar sipping your cafe, or rather your cappuccino. And of course, getting that typical sweet Italian breakfast, which is such a treat. I did a whole video on Italian breakfast. Check it out. This time, we got these pastries called Bocconotti. They have buttery shells and are filled with jam or custard. They're a really local specialty, usually enjoyed around the holidays, and they really reminded us of a Salento specialty called Pasicciotto, an all-time favorite. Fueled up and ready for the day, we hopped in the car. Kiro obviously didn't have his cafe and went to the neighboring town called Alberobello for a truly fantastic day. 
Numero cuatro, seek out the architectural gems of the region and really wherever you go in Italy, that's gonna be different. Trulli are such a singular aesthetic. And back in the day, they were made floor to ceiling of stones stacked with each other. The story goes that historically, when the tax man came to make you pay your property taxes, all you'd have to do is take off that top of the conical roof and the rest would cave in on itself. And so, you know, the tax man would come to get taxes on your property, on your home, and you'd say, well, property? What property? Where? Numero cinque. Seek out the foods, the dishes of the region. Again, Italy is not a homogenous country, so this will vary based on specifically where you go. Here's a snack that's a specialty of Puglia, and Salento specifically, called Rustico Lecese, a savory puff pastry filled with bechamel, mozzarella, and tomato puree. A little rain can't keep us down when we've got pasticciotti and Rustico. Connor got a pasticciotto, mm. that pastry I mentioned that's similar to a bocconotto. So how does this pasticciotto con amarena compare to the bocconotto of the morning? It's better. Pasticciotto is the best. True. Find regional pasta shapes or dishes. A simple Google search and asking your waiter can point you in the right direction. You don't want to miss these dishes and they'll make you realize that Olive Garden should not define how you think of Italian food. Dinner that evening was the kind of experience I recommend you seek out in Italy. We ate at a restaurant that was a part of a macelleria, a butcher shop. It had the most incredible meat dishes. And yes, I do say this as a former vegetarian before I moved to Italy. It was a pretty unforgettable dining experience. Wow. This is like an adult thing that I don't know if I would have ever thought I would have ever done. Mm -hmm. Like some of this stuff that we're doing, I'm like, pinch me. Cause I, I'm like, well, yeah, Puglia is pretty like cool because it's like. Well, and even just like five years ago, if you would tell me I was about to do any of this, I'd be like, ha. Ah. And don't worry, Kira was there too, hanging out calmly under the table. Again, I just love that in Italy, dogs are welcomed just about everywhere. After dinner, we did one of my absolute favorite Italian things. Abbiamo fatto una passeggiata, which simply means we took a stroll. Numero sei, fate una passeggiata. Yes, it's a walkabout, it's a stroll, but it's more than that. It's a time when basically the entire town is out and about walking around the old town, the piazzas. It's kind of a time to see and be seen. And most importantly, it implicates a feeling of leisure, right? Of really enjoying life. And if that's not Italian, I don't know what is. Numero sette. If you're in Southern Italy, anywhere near the Basilicata region, go to Matera. Bright and early, we set out for Matera, about an hour and a half drive away from Martina Franca. Matera has got to be one of the most jaw-dropping destinations I've been to. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site of one of the oldest civilizations. It's been featured in Pasolini's The Gospel According to Matthew and Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ. It's also been featured in an exclusive video for my incredible Patreon community, The Quirky Club. Hey, Quirky Club, I hope you're all well. I wanted to show you guys uh, this really cool place where I am. It is called Matera. It's in Basilicata. If you enjoy my videos, I hope you'll consider joining this community for fun perks and to support my work. Thank you. The Sassi di Matera consists of two parts, one with many old structures, and across the valley, ancient cave dwellings built right into the mountainside. And you can actually hike over to them and even go inside them. I've been multiple times and it never gets old. Plus, I do have family in Basilicata. Ciao Rocco, Domenico, Carmella. Numero otto. Okay, let's talk about Italian hot chocolate and how if Mother Nature hands you a chilly rainy day, as she did to us, you've got to go get some. It's thicker and richer than any hot chocolate I've had in America. It is 
awesome. <laughs> Numero nove. While we're on the topic of beverages. If you're a wine fan, find a local winery who will do a tasting. You won't regret it. You'll learn how they make their wines and you'll find that there are nearly endless indigenous Italian grape varieties. So much more than the ones that you may have heard of abroad like Barolo, Sangiovese, Chianti. You can of course also learn all about this from my recently released book, Cheese, Wine and Bread, published by HarperCollins, in which I deep dive into the Italian wine scene getting my hands dirty with local vineyards, and just traveling up and down the country. Numero dieci, but really, the pizza. So if you and your friends don't want to have your own DIY pizza night like we did, don't stress, but you should still make pizza a part of your trip. And find a good pizza spot. Google is good for that because there are some less than awesome places. Not all the pizza in Italy is amazing, but by and large, it is excellent. Even stopping at the Auto Grill off the highway during your drive will render a pizza experience better than most you'll find outside of Italy. Mm. And enjoy. That's all for this video and my tips for enjoying your Italian trip. Ci vediamo alla prossima. Grazie, come sempre, e ciao. Don't forget to keep it quirky.